Hello everybody, really good that you can all join us today for this week's Spotlight on Learning Assembly at home. And this week we're going to be thinking about just how internationally minded that we're all being. Because if you look at our definitions here of being internationally minded, to understand how my actions affect others. So the fact that we're all being really responsible and sensible and we're staying at home, we might want to go out, but along with the rest of the world, we're staying at home and we're keeping safe, we're not spreading any germs, so that hopefully we can all work together to move things back to normal as fast as we can. Now, I've got a bit of a surprise for you this week in our Spotlight Assembly. We have some very special guests joining us from around the world, some familiar faces, who would like to share with you some ways that they can stay positive in this slightly challenging time. So Eva in Slovenia is going to talk to us about the things that she's doing. Hi Nexus, my name is Eva and I'm from Slovenia. Our school in Chernice also closed. So we're staying at home for three weeks. I hope you stay at home also um, and stay healthy. At home, you can read books as in a library. You can also play your instruments if you have one. Um, and make a concert for your family. You can watch some films or cartoons as if you are in a theater. Thanks, Eva. Some fantastic ideas. I love those ideas of getting your house set up in different ways, like a museum and a library. Let's hear from Miss Karina in Romania now. Hi, my Nexus friends. I'm sending you this video from Romania, uh, from the city called Bucharest. That's where I work now. My school has moved to uh, distance learning as well, starting this week. So we are doing lessons on Google Classroom, CISO. We uh, have live lessons on Zoom. I think it's going really well. There are lots of skills both teachers and students have learned and parents. Um, but I do feel like uh, I need to get away from my computer. And uh, when I do feel like that, I go outside because I started my own garden. And I would like to show this to you. So over here, I've got beautiful flowers. So I water them. I take them outside. I bring them back inside because at night it's still cold. Here I've got strawberries. And here I'm hoping to grow some cucumbers and tomatoes. Yay! Stay healthy and hello from Bucharest. Great ideas from Miss Karina there. So yes, yeah, switch off from your device and get outside in your garden if you're lucky enough to have one. So over to Vietnam now and let's see what Lily and Miss Melanie have been doing to stay safe and to make the most of this time. Hi everybody from Ho Chi Minh City. We are missing you in Malaysia. We're keeping very um, safe in our apartment here as much as possible. So this is our balcony view. So and um, this is Lily here with her online home learning. She's keeping very busy with that. The teachers are sending lots of interesting things for her to do online. 
And when she is not online, she's discovering her hidden talents. What have you done here, Lily? So, I was making peanut butter, co peanut butter chocolate cookies. And this is how they turned out. Really delicious, actually. I didn't know she was such a great baker. She did it all by herself. And she's also exploring her artistic side. What did you do here? So, I did some painting. And here? Um, I made a scrunchie. <laughs> and when she's not doing those things, what are you doing, Lily? Playing with the cats. Yeah, so we're finding lots of interesting things to do inside the house at the moment. So I'm sure you can find lots of things to do too. Bye! Bye. Some great advice there from Miss Melanie and Lily. If you've got pets at home, I'm sure they're really enjoying all of the extra attention that you can give them. So I've been looking for ideas for other stories from around the world. So it's not just all about the coronavirus. And I thought year six might enjoy this story. In Japan, where the schools are closed, the, the learners there have been very innovative and they've tried to find a way that they can continue with their graduation ceremony, which they were due. So they've all worked together on Minecraft to create a virtual graduation ceremony. They've even created a red carpet for the students to walk down. I love that idea. Now this week, I set a challenge for you all as additional home learning for when you'd completed your other home learning. And I invited you to write a story about the rigorous tiger or the responsible gecko. And the idea is that we'll collect all these stories together and then we'll publish them in a book that will stay in the library for everyone to read. I'm going to give a special shout out to year five learners because I've had the most entries from year five, so well done. And I asked Sophia Sue, to read out her short story because I thought it would it would be a lovely chance for you all to hear it read by her. It's a story about the responsible gecko. I hope that you can hear it okay. I'm not quite sure about the sound quality on my computer, but let's have a go. Responsible gecko. One day on a sunny January morning, gecko decided to go for a walk in the woods. For the rest of the morning, Gecko relaxed in the woods when suddenly he heard shuffling and moaning. Gecko quickly sprinted towards where the sounds were coming from. It took some time for Gecko to find a place, but Gecko found it in the end. What he saw shocked him. It was a small fluffy kitten stuck in a huge plastic bag. So Gecko decided to use his flexibility to help the poor little kitten get out. 40 minutes later, Gecko was back at home, cooling down. Gecko thought of helping other animals and trying his best to protect the world. After a few days of picking up trash and helping animals, he became known as Responsible Gecko. Since then, Gecko always liked to help and share. Thanks, Sophia. What I really liked about Sophia's story was the fact that she not only included the theme of being responsible for the environment with the plastic bag that was left on the floor, but she also included the theme of if we all take responsibility, if we see something wrong, step up and try and make a positive change. So well done, Sophia. Thank you for that. And thanks to everybody else who shared a story with me as well. So our additional writing challenge for next week, and I would like to see entries from everybody, you've got a whole week to do this, is to write a story about the kind proboscis monkey. Oh, and I've just noticed a bit of a mistake there. I shall correct that. So think about in your story, how did the monkey become kind? How did they help other people? Maybe give examples of how they were kind to themselves. They really looked after themselves. Maybe the monkey used very positive words and actions, helped the other characters out in the story. And while you're thinking about writing your story, think about how you can be kind next week at home, because we're going to have to continue to be a little bit resilient and make the most out of the 
situation. So if you're kind to your brother or sister or parents, uh, also if you're kind to yourself through making sure you go to bed on time, stick to that routine, go to bed early, get up early, exercise, eat healthily, you'll feel a lot better in yourself. So really important to be kind to other people, but also be kind to yourselves as well. Okay, so I asked everybody to share some photographs of learning in action at home so we can really share and celebrate our learning at home together. And I got some fantastic pictures. Some may have come through after I recorded this, so I'll include them in next week's edition, don't worry. So you can see Jonah there working really hard at home. We've got James doing some math. We've got Ariana looking as if she's really concentrating there. Lovely to see Jamie reading with her sister. There's Alan looking like he's working very hard and Aidan doing some writing in his exercise book. And then we can see Finlow and Sophia with some really beautiful cursive handwriting, Sophia, well done. We've, we've got um, some responses to a story that Miss Rachel told through a video and then she asked her year two learners to answer questions and they've worked really hard on that. We've got King in year one with some really fabulous cursive handwriting. Well done, King. And Ryan, his brother, busy, I think, doing some maths there, I can see. And Rashid looking as if he's really enjoying the learning that he's doing at home. Fantastic, Rashid. So I also asked everybody, if you've got anything that's worked well, please share it because this is new, new for us all, isn't it? We're all working together to do our best. Um, Miss Sarah and Miss Tam both shared with me a template for a home learning schedule. If any parents would like a soft copy, just email me and I'll share it with you. I think it's a really good idea. It doesn't just include the learning that you're doing that day, but it also has what time your break time is, your lunch time, maybe some other chores around the house, maybe some games that you'll play. So it really helps show visually a very clear routine to the children and you can plan it together so you've got ownership there and you're all agreeing with it now i've got a wonderful video of ariella learning in a, in a slightly unusual space which makes learning very fun what are you doing ariella Where'd you start? Well done, careful. Fantastic learning there, Ariella, well done. Now, Zoe and Isla and Dad are demonstrating to us all how important it is to keep fit and active. Have you all done some exercise every day? Because I know Miss Rachel has shared lots of ideas for how you can continue P at home. Everybody should be exercising every day. It will give you so much more energy and help you learn at your best. Let's see what Zoe and Isla and Dad have done. They're doing some yoga at home. Looks like they've practiced that quite a lot. Fantastic, girls. Well done. And we've got, you can't quite see it, but we've got a picture of Zoe and Isla have created their own nail salon as well. So be creative, have fun, do something a bit different. Also, every day you should try and use your imagination. Look at Jamie there. She's in her mud kitchen making mud pies by the looks of it with her sister. We've got Aidan taking the opportunity to practice playing his keyboard. Sophia is enjoying being artistic. Look, she's got all of her colouring pens out there and she can really enjoy taking the time to be creative. Just like James, 
who is looking as if he is having a lot of fun role playing and getting dressed up. Good for you, James. And I'm hiding actually his beautiful picture that he shared as well, just behind that. So thank you everybody for sharing your learning and sharing your tips and for being so adaptable this week. It sounds as if you're all being really positive and resilient through these slightly unusual times, but of course you are because you are a Nexus learner and I know that you can make the best out of any situation. If you are feeling a little bit anxious or a little bit overwhelmed by your learning, please don't worry. We're all just trying to get used to this. Just get in touch with your teacher and just let them know how you are feeling. If you're feeling you haven't quite got enough learning, then please don't forget you have got all of the additional skill up practice things that you can be doing which is shared on your weekly overview so I think there should be plenty to, to keep you busy but please take care look after yourselves and make the most of this unusual time okay keep sharing your learning and I will see you all next week for next week's spotlight on learning at home bye have a great weekend